The two astronauts who traveled to the International Space Station aboard Boeing's Starliner spacecraft say they're confident it can return them to Earth. Test pilots Butch Wilmore and Sonny Williams blasted off into space last month and have been aboard the ISS ever since. The launch was marred by leaks and thruster failures, and further technical issues have kept them in space longer than scheduled. The trip was meant to last eight days, and it's now day 35. In a press conference from Orbit, the duo said they could return once thruster testing is completed. We're going to learn from that, and we're going to incorporate new processes, new procedures that we will uh, employ if necessary. So obviously, uh, right now, we are ready. Uh, we will be ready then, unless the, the data shows otherwise. But right now, based on what we know, we are absolutely ready. CBS News space consultant Bill Harwood joins us now from Florida. Bill, it's great to be with you again. Tell us, what do we know about thruster testing? Well, you know, they've got a thruster that's identical to the ones on board the Starliner. They've got it at a NASA test facility at White Sands, New Mexico. And what they're trying to do, John, is they're trying to duplicate the environmental conditions and, you know, the temperatures and pressures and things that the thrusters in space were experiencing uh, when those failures occurred. Now, they occurred, you know, during final approach to the space station. They were facing the sun, so there had some heat coming there. And they were repetitively, the computer was repetitively firing these thrusters literally hundreds of times on that final approach. So they're trying to see if the, the solar orientation, the rapidity of these jet firings contributed to this. And if they can, if they can replicate the problem, uh, then they know how to handle it down the road. They can, they can fire the jets in a different way with the spacecraft, perhaps slightly different orientation, and that problem goes away. But they're, they're, they're trying to figure that out right now as we speak. So, Bill, I know nothing. That sounds like a com complicated problem. I mean, or it's, I mean is, this a, is this a problem that's kind of like, well, this is regular business, or this is something that's a, a, a significant s safety concern? You know, you, you have to keep in mind that this is the first piloted flight of the Starliner. They've never had it up with people during a full-up mission. Uh, and so they're really kind of trying to wring it out. They think the, the thrusters will actually work fine. They hot-fired those thrusters that failed later in the flight after it was docked to the space station. They all worked fine except for one that, that apparently has has actually failed. But most of the thrusters are working just fine, and they think the crew would be perfectly safe to undock and come home tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But, you know, what you have to remember is that all these thrusters and those helium leaks you referenced, they're located in a thing called the service module that's right below the Starliner crew capsule. And before they reenter the atmosphere, they detach that, and that burns up in the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. They don't get it back. So they're never going to get a chance to put their hands on the hardware to look at exactly what happened. So they're taking as much time as they can right now to run these tests on the ground as well as test in space to try to ring this out once and for all. Oh, well, that's incredibly interesting. Okay, um, so my last question then, Bill, is, um, is it, do they have the space and equipment and supplies and everything for astronauts to spend this kind of extra time up there? And might they be able to hitch another ride home if, if something happened with the Starliner? I mean, there's, there are other ways to get home, right? Well, two answers to your question. First of all, there's plenty of supplies on board the International Space Station. They keep the food, the clothing, all of those sorts of things stocked up on the lab just in case something like this happens. So plenty of margin there, no issue. Now, you're right. They could, in theory, bring uh, the, two, the two crew members home on a, on a SpaceX Crew Dragon. It would take a lot of replanning. It'd be a big deal if they did that. And it would mean they concluded that the Starliner wasn't safe to come home in. They haven't done that yet. The Starliner is certified, like I said, to leave right now if there's an emergency on the space station. So nobody expects that to happen. But in a worst case, you know, depending on how the testing goes, that option is always in their back pocket. Bill Hartwood. Bill, always such a pleasure. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.